Hey what's up guys, my name is Eterno, welcome back to the Game Engine series. It's uh, great to be back. It's very hot in the office. Air conditioner is hopefully going to get fixed tomorrow, so that will make things a little bit more fun. Um, so basically, like today, I thought we would um, have a go at getting to basically what I planned, surprisingly. Vagalops, thank you for the subs. The sub coming in already. Appreciate the support. Um, basically what we planned, if we look at the roadmap, which is just hazelengine.com slash roadmap. Uh, so the kind of, what I had actually planned for today, which is the 23rd, is um, text rendering. So let's basically go here and I'm going to have a go at integrating this with uh, Hazel so that we can render some text because at the moment we can't. There's that like little delay, right? Five second delay and then it starts. Yeah, cool. So that's kind of what we've got at the moment for our little game that we're making. We have like a five second delay here for some reason just to test out like when we can hit play kind of within the game because it's going to be like a physics based building game. Uh, and then we obviously need kind of the ability to render text <laughs> so that we can render like things you can buy and how much they cost and what they're called and in-game text basically. So we're going to use um, this kind of MSDF gen thing to do it. Now, what I want to kind of look at actually as well is because Hazel, like Big Hazel uses that as well. And I'm pretty sure if I remember... I'm pretty sure I I may have a fork of this that adds like pre-make to it maybe. Yeah, I do. So if you look through my repositories on GitHub, you can see I actually have uh, MSDF Gen and MSDF Atlas Gen. So these two things, um, which are very old, well actually I guess not that old, they're like a year old. But the benefit of this is that um, they like have, yeah, so this is like a little bit behind. So it's probably worth updating these. We probably should do that. But basically the benefit here is that because uh, Big Hazel uses these, I've actually added like, you know, pre-make configurations to them, which is very good. <laughs> it makes things a lot easier for us to integrate. So you can see we have uh, you know, free type as a project here with all the files we need, as well as MSDF Gen, uh, you know, as a project here as well. And then MS MSDF Atlas Gen is another repository which we use, which you can see kind of goes off of MSDF Gen. And if I'm not mistaken, is it this one? Yeah, so see, this commit that I added with the premake, well, I changed the premake script in this one, but it's like B906, and B906 is what this points to. So this submodule is this repository, so we probably should just only add this guy. And that also, I think, has a premake. Um, yeah, which you can see includes MSDF gen, which is the other premake file from here, and then we basically create that MSDF Atlas, Atlas Gen project with all of its requirements. And the reason, like the difference between these two repositories is basically MSDF Gen is, is all of the actual kind of code to, you know, read the free type uh, glyphs and like rasterize them and everything into like a special, uh, into varying different like sign distance field um, textures basically. And then MSDF Atlas Gen can pack those textures nicely into, you can see, a texture atlas that will look something like this. And there's different ones we can use. I don't even remember which one <laughs> Big Hazel uses. Maybe it's this one or this one. I think it's one of these two. Um, because you can see they support some more things, which is nice. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Any questions before we get into it? Uh, did someone already recommend slug library for text rendering? Yeah, I think I've heard of slug, but this is, I think this is going to be better. What's slug? Ah, slug. Okay. No, I was thinking of something else. Just looking at slug here. Yeah, this might be good. Yeah, this is similar. It looks like it's similar. 
Um, I don't know, actually. I haven't used this. I don't know if it's worth looking into. That's kind of nice. Wow, text layout. That's kind of nice. Okay, this was different than I thought. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it seems to actually do the rendering kind of on the GPU. And by rendering, I assume it means rasterizing the glyphs. Who would buy this? <laughs> Do you really need this as a wall poster? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is worth looking into at some point. Wow, this even generates the vertex buffers for you. So that's kind of, this does more than uh, MSDF, which just kind of creates the texture for you, basically. And then you have to do the rest yourself, which is fine. Like, it's not particularly difficult. Oh, that's interesting. So you kind of have to convert, like... TTF and OTF to a dot slug file with what it needs, which I'm guessing is kind of like the cached font data, which is like, you know, fine. Right. Interesting. Well, cool. I might take a look at this if I get the chance. Well, I don't know. Like, should we just <laughs> dive into this instead? What's the deal with this? Like, where do I get this? Is it like a GitHub or something? Patented. Yeah, is there like some... Is this like... Not open source? Yeah, that's kind of not... Yeah, I don't know. This seems a bit too corporate. So it can be licensed on a per title basis. Yeah, this definitely seems... Um, like it probably costs money and also it's an open source. All right, well, whatever. Let's deal, let's just stick with um, MSDF. Okay, so how do we integrate this? Um, I don't know, like, well, I could probably just, I could probably just look at Big Hazel. Um, however, I guess because, like, for your entertainment, it might be better if I just forget everything I know and kind of try and do it from scratch without, like, using any reference code. That just might be fun for your for your entertainment, as I mentioned. Because uh, it's been a while. Like, it's been, like... I don't know. I don't remember when I added text rendering to Hazel. Probably, like, two years ago. Like, a long time ago. It's obviously a very necessary feature. Um, so, I definitely don't remember anything. Uh, so, yeah. Actually, it'd be interesting to kind of take a look. Let's see. That's probably the wrong account. No, it's not. 
If I take it, so this is Big Hazel. Um, can I search commits? I can probably just search this, right? Yeah. Uh, um, well, I guess we'd have a, yeah, like font maybe dot cpp or something as a file. No. Yeah, like what's the history of this file? When was it added? Initial font rendering commit, September 14, 2021. Okay, that's like a, what, a year and a third ago. That's not that uh, old, I guess. So yeah, around like September 14 seems to be, <laughs> 2021 is when I seem to add this stuff. So that's kind of cool. Um, that's not that f that's not that long ago. So yeah. So should I just? I guess I'll just like make like I'll just do it from scratch again without using a reference code, and we'll this will be fun and possibly a struggle. I don't know. Like the thing is, you know, I'm, I think I made it pretty clear that this series is like mostly for you guys, and by mostly I mean entirely. So. That's why, like, I don't know what's better. Like, I don't know. I'm I'm in too deep <laughs> in this series to, like, you know, even know what you guys want. So, um, if there's any, like, you know, if there's any feedback to how you want to see these episodes pan out and what kind of is entertaining and, I guess, educational for you, then definitely, like, leave some feedback and just, yeah, let me know. Um... Because otherwise, uh, like, what's the point, right? Okay, um, so the first step then... The, okay, the first thing I actually want to do, to be fair... Is I kind of want to... Um, clean up some stuff. So, at the moment, we're on the projects branch. And we've kind of got, like... I mean, projects work, and I think we did fix some crashes... So I think it's probably fine to just merge this stuff like into... What are these changes? Nothing really. Well, I'm GUI's rubbish and I don't think these are really changes, are they? Like, have we changed this? No, I can't stage them, so that means we haven't changed them. Um, so let's maybe check out the master branch. And then I'll merge projects into master. And let's push that. So, okay, so we've now merged into master, and then I'm going to make a branch from there. I should probably delete, like, the other branches. Uh, let's make a branch called uh, text. We'll just call it text and check out. So, text is now the branch that we're on, and that's going to be where I start all this stuff. Um, so, the first thing we'll do is we'll have to add... Um, I'm assuming we just have to add this as a submodule because that has that as a submodule. So I think all we have to really do is um, basically, like, if we go to our repository uh, and what is it, Hazel Vendor? Like, if I do get submodule add, is there like a do I have to add recursive or something? Probably not, right? There is static recursive. No, I guess I guess not. We'll just do add, um, and then what is it? Repository and then path. So repository and then path is vendor. Oh, uh, sorry, Hazel vendor. Hazel vendor MSDF. Gen Atlas, I guess, because that's the name of MSDF Atlas Gen. MSDF Atlas Gen. I'll try and keep it the same as this. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that. Don't think that did a recursive clone. So if we go Hazel Vendor, MSDF Atlas Gen, MSDF Gen. Yeah, that's nothing. So I guess we'll have to, I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but get submodule, I guess, init and update. And that will, 
obtain, oops, that. What? Are you stupid? Yeah, you are. Oh no, I went the wrong directory. <laughs> um. It's the wrong terminal. Yeah, so this also needs to... Uh, I think there's a git submodule in it recursive or something like that. No? Or maybe it's update recursive? Nah. In it and that's it. There's definitely a way to do it. Oh, here we go. Someone's saying stuff. Okay, so it's sub sub module update, yeah, in it and recursive, yeah. That that's in the build script, by the way. So that would have been the next thing I did was look at the build script to see what it does because or the setup script because it obviously does that. Okay, cool. Thanks for the sub, Doug. Doug Tense, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. 2023 is not too bad. Ja I mean, January, like, I don't know. In my mind, I feel like the year starts with February. Like, I don't even know why people do anything in January. January is like, to me, like, January is almost the break. Because, like, I feel like December... Well, my birthday is also in December. So that makes things a bit more, I guess, like, hectic. Because we'll usually, like, go somewhere or do something. But then, obviously, there's the whole, like, holiday season. Um, and so there's just a bunch of stuff going on. So... Um, I just feel like, you know, January is like the, all the festivities are over and I can rest. <laughs> and so January is kind of like the lazy month. And then February is like, in my mind at least, where the, where, like, that's when the hard work begins. So to be honest, I don't even know why I'm here. Um, should be, I don't know, what have I been doing lately? I've been playing The Witcher 3, like the remastered one. Well, not the remastered one, what's it called? Like the next gen update or whatever. That's been fun. So yeah. That's what I should be doing. Anyway, um, okay, cool. So basically uh, we have all this stuff now. So I think what we can probably do now is if we go into pre-make, uh, yeah, we can just include like one of these guys. I guess I'll keep this alphabetical or in alphabetical order. So, um, if we just do MSDF uh, Atlas Gen, then I think that file includes MSDF Gen, and we should be okay, maybe. So let's maybe try and run that. See if that works. Yeah, that seems to have done something. So now under dependencies, you can see we have three new guys. We have free type. Can I not do that? One second. Get my little writing utility so that I can do a cool little zoom for you guys. So we have these three over here now, free type, and then these two. Um, that's what's new. And hopefully if I try building that, it will just work because it should. Yep. Um, there's some warnings and stuff, but I don't really care. They're not bad and we'll build these two as well. And there you go, everything compiles. Pretty easy. Uh, I should, as I mentioned, I should update these, but I think I'll do that at the end, um, just to make sure everything's working, because this is the branch that Big Hazel is using. Um, so I just wanna make sure that like, you know, we integrate it, like all of that works first before I do any updating, because updating is always like a bit of a risk. Okay, um, so. Now that we have that stuff, let's go back to, I guess, the pre-make file. And um, the thing is, like, Hazel itself needs to actually use that, because obviously we need to link it and also set up the include directories. So, if we go to Hazel and then Hazel's pre-make, and all these include directories, they're all kind of in... Um, this like dependencies lower file. So let's go ahead and add this stuff here. Again, I guess I'll kind of keep it 
in alphabetical order. Um, I mean, it's clearly not. I guess I won't. I don't know what's better. Uh, so MSDF gen can basically be So this will actually be MSDF Atlas Gen, and then I guess then MSDF Gen and include. Do we even need to include that stuff? We might have to like, because I obviously don't remember how to use this at all. We might have to. Okay, so there's um Atlas Gen is here. Uh, and then, do we need this stuff? I guess there it is. It's, it's just here. Um, okay, so we'll do that, I guess. Something like that, I don't know. Um, okay, library, library directory, we don't really need that because we can just link um, MSDF. I guess just, I guess just linking Atlas Gen is enough because I'm sure that links the other one. And that'll all kind of get linked. So let's build that. Straw Hat Fleet, glad to hear. You're welcome. Okay, so now if we build Hazel, that should probably link the other thing. If we just go to like, add reference, we can probably verify that that is in fact a dependency. Um, okay, so, I mean, that's kind of it for now. I think if we go and make like a file, like let's just like find like, I don't know, the renderer. And then inside the renderer, if I just make a file called like, I don't know, font.h and font.cpp. Then yeah, we should be able to include that, and we should be able to include, which that doesn't look good, uh, and we should be able to include that, so. Oh no, I didn't actually add the include directory, my bad, I forgot. Um, I added it to dependencies here, but you need to also add it obviously here. So let's do it like, I don't know, here. <laughs> so random. Just build pre make, it'll run pre make or not. Okay, never mind. Oh, well, that didn't work actually. Um, yeah, something, something. Oh, that's right, it doesn't like uh, hyphens. That's why we have underscores. Or we could just do that. Let's probably do underscores instead of hyphens. I don't know why it doesn't like that. So is that gonna work? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so now this little file of ours should compile. And it does not. Oh, that's not a good sign. Syntax error constant. Const. Um, yeah, this is a bit doge. Didn't we, do we have this in Hazel? I mean, this should be okay, but it's complaining supposedly because it's the same class thing and it's not a pointer. But I don't know, did we, didn't we have this in Big Hazel? I might just cheat quickly. <laughs> Look at uh, Big Hazel. Okay, um. What am I looking for? That signed. Yeah, I actually remember something to do with that. Signed distance. 
Ah, but alas, it, it is there. Hmm. So what did I do to make it work? Is it because this is a different version of C++? Uh, where's that junk? No, this is C++ 17. So is Big Hazel. I mean, I guess it's... Yeah, this would be being compiled as part of that, wouldn't it? Yeah. So why are you upset? <laughs> Any reason you prefer ligatures on? I... Honestly, don't. Like, I just installed Visual Studio, they're there, and they don't really bother me. Um, so, I didn't bother changing it. Um, okay, so... I don't know, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. We clearly... I, I'm sure we compiled this file, right? Yeah, and it definitely does compile. Oh, did I add this or something? No, probably not. I mean, if I added something, it would have been in my fork, right? So, that's why this is very strange. Does this compile? See, that compiles. Oh, I'm beginning to remember something. Wait, that's... No, nah, that's weird, though, isn't it? So, it compiles here, but it doesn't compile here. Why? Is it? Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Well, actually, let's take a look. Because I guess there might be different compile settings. No, well, this is also C++17. Yeah, what is this? Sign distance. This is part of MSDF Gen, yeah. Ugh. The worst part about this is I remember this being an issue. I just don't remember what I did to fix it. Um, I guess we can look at, like... Yeah, I don't know. This looks pretty normal. Like, this is a thing, but that's just, that's not, we didn't see that being used anywhere. I don't know if it's something to do with PCH is being used, probably not. I mean, do we even have to include that file there? Maybe, maybe not. This literally looks like no different, I think, to what we have. That's the same as us. Like, all of this stuff's basically identical. Like, the stuff that matters anyway. Hmm. How weird. Well, again, I don't really remember if we specifically even need to include this. I just thought I would. Um, and let me quickly check. I'll cheat again and just see what this includes. Okay, so this includes MSDF data, which includes... Oh, undef infinite. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that's so dumb. Oh, it's probably because... The PCH includes Windows.h, and Windows, being the weirdos that they are, probably define a macro called infinite, and that's why it doesn't work as part of our build. So that, you can see, works. Yeah, I cheated, unfortunately. I would have never... Well, I mean, I clearly did find that issue. But isn't that, isn't that hilarious? Because infinite is like a C++ is like a Windows um, define, I think. Yeah, there it is. Winbase.h define infinite. Ugh, these guys. All right, cool. Um. So, this will probably go in somewhere else, and to be honest, there's, I'm sure there is a, 
like we probably should just use like you know include windows with the main and lean thing set or whatever so we're not just doing include windows because include windows h is always a bit of a drag yeah well you know macros yeah macros are definitely not good for constants like that but you know windows is written in c and you don't have like const expert and it's also very very old code all right um <clears throat> so basically we're gonna try and like open a font file so let's just do file system path which, you know, this is like very, like, this is kind of primitive because, again, at the end of the day, um, this is gonna, this is not gonna take in a file path, really. I mean, this file might, to be honest, but obviously, like, you know, we deal with fonts as assets, so they'll have, like, an asset handle, um, and then eventually they'll probably be packaged into, like, an asset pack, and that's kind of how we'll deal with them, so this kind of, you know, file system path situation is, uh, if anything, it's temporary, but we might, we'll see, because, you know, there still needs to be some kind of mechanism from, for reading it from a file. It's just the the danger with kind of assuming that this is final code is just that typically, again, you don't really have raw files sitting around in a distributed game. Um, and now, what to do next is completely, don't remember anything. So, the thing, what I'm going to do is, basically, I'm going to find... I'm going to go to this MSDF gen repository and I'm assuming they're going to have a demo. Um, in fact, here they have something. So here's an example of loading a font. Beautiful. I don't know what this load font function is. Is this something that they have? Um, and then here's a, a little shader as well. So we're going to, based off of their little, like, like little readme, that's basically what we're going to use to guide us through this, hopefully. Um, so I'm going to just like, basically, well, I mean, what I could do is just immediately just copy this, right? Paste it in here. Now they are using namespace MSDF gen. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm assuming this stuff is probably, yeah, in that namespace. So I'm just going to add this everywhere. And that's also in that namespace. Okay, good. So from here, I can kind of see, uh, you know, where, like where these functions are. They're inside MSDF gen, which is fine. Um... So I'll kind of just add that everywhere. And see, this is really nice. This is why I would always have, you know, not do the using namespace thing, because you can easily see what's coming from what here, which is very useful when you're kind of reading code. So to be honest, like the way this example is written, I would have gotten rid of that using namespace MSDF gen and just, you know, actually put it everywhere, because then that just makes it way easier for the programmer to see what's going on. Um, all right, cool. Is that it? And see, with things like Vector2, like we might have a class called Vector2, so if it's not in that namespace, then it could be a problem. All right, that builds, beautiful. Okay, so um, I guess we'll try and load whatever font is specified, right? So it wants a const char file name, which is a little bit annoying, because to convert that, um, Let's just take file path. We have to actually go to a string first, and then we can pass in a C string. Because this is a temporary. So we need to make sure we keep it around. Um, okay, cool. And so this is going to load glyph A. Um, and then I guess it will generate something. And well, this will save a PNG, and this is obviously not exactly what we want. But uh, this is decent. And then I think MSDF Atlas Gen. Uh, yeah, you can see. Uh, no, that's. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just got the same readme. All right. Well, that's fun. Wait. This is not. This isn't. Why? This is MSDF Gen. Aha. Uh -huh, here we go. Um. Yeah, this doesn't have any example code, but I think it should probably have an example file or something, right? No. Why would you ever do that? 
Or the main. Or the main dot CPP. All oh, right, this runs it as like a command line. Yeah, because you can use this as a command line program. Maybe this is how I kind of reverse engineered it. I'm not sure. Yeah, actually, I remember. I remember. This is, this is, I think, what I use for reference. The command line. Like, uh, the little console program they have. And then I was able to kind of piece that together into what we want. Which is annoying, because it's like that many lines of code. Um, now, if we find, like, MSDF Atlas Gen, though, I think that main file probably isn't. Oh, it is here. But I guess it's not, yeah, it's not, this isn't defined, so it's not going to compile anything. But we can still use it, like, for reference. So, and this is, again, a bit a bit tricky and a bit hard. Just because it's littered with so much extra stuff. And I don't know, maybe there is a better example somewhere. I'm sure there probably is. But um, this is just what we have here. And that's what I think I used last time. So, yeah. Yeah, so you can see lots of this is just dealing with arguments. Which is a bit annoying. And then creating like some font input thing. Yeah, so you can see there's a little struct here they have called font input, which just has a bunch of stuff. And that's going to be probably, that's just a struct, just piecing together some data, basically. But then eventually, uh, they're going to basically use that in here um, to load the font. Um, and then you can see they're going to go through all the font inputs, because you can specify multiple. And it's going to try and, yeah, load it, and then try and load a particular character set, I guess, from there. Um, and how's it doing that? Character set load. And then, sure. What is this? That's part of MSDF Atlas Gen, sure. And then we have the font geometry, which I believe has, like, information about the font metrics and stuff. So it's actually quite important. Um, yeah, and then you have all these glyph ranges, and it's all kind of, kind of coming back to me. Um, yeah, bunch of glyphs being loaded, sure, and that goes into fonts. And then, yeah, we have to use the tight atlas packer as well to basically set all these dimensions, uh, because that's what's going to actually store all of this. And then I believe for Jeremy and the Alice, yeah, they're basically going to dispatch like a bunch of threads to do that in parallel because this actually takes a bit of time to like, create these sign distance fields. So it's good to kind of multi-thread that. And then eventually we'll call this make atlas function uh, with whatever generator we want because it can generate. This is basically where this comes in. Um, these things. So you can see MSDF, MS, MTSDF are just different generators that you pass in. Uh, with all the details and that based on what generator function you've provided uh, called gen function it's gonna make the atlas and that's what happens here so that's kind of like the flow of it um, yeah uh, and that's basically we can use this for reference which to be honest like now that I'm thinking about it I don't know if I want to go through that again I feel like could probably just take it from Big Hazel because I don't know, I feel like I've shown you guys <laughs> at least where it came from. Um, cause this stuff is very similar. Like if we look at Big Hazel for a minute, which, um, do I still have Big Hazel? No, I closed it. Let me find that file. Yeah, so this is in Big Hazel. Um, 
Uh, yeah, there's like some caching and stuff going on, but you can see a lot of it like, yeah, see like for example, here's the font holder class. Like this is, a lot of this is the same. Like a lot of this came from there. Just, we have like some character set ranges being declared here and uh, I don't know if that, yeah, see the workload and like distributing this across threads is kind of the same. Um, yeah, create and cache atlas with the different generators. Oh, cool. So we support MSDF and MTSDF. Like this stuff is basically the same. Hopefully you can see that uh, as like this, right? So that's kind of where it came from. So now that we kind of have that, um, uh, we can kind of just use it from there. But yeah, like again, like there's no real, like the benefit of using, of doing this file, which is kind of the MSDF Atlas Gen main, is just that like, obviously it supports every possible configuration because this is like a standalone app that generates whatever you ask for. So you kind of, in a way you have exam an example of absolutely every use case, which is really obviously useful to have. So that's why like also it is a good kind of thing to use. Um, Cool. All right, so let's kind of, I, I'm interested to just make sure that everything's working and everything's like linking correctly. So, oh, this is Big Hazel. Oh, this is Big Hazel, all right. So if we go back to font, we obviously have this example kind of working and it saves an output PNG. So let's just verify that this program works basically. Um, so what I'll do is, well, we can just go into like, uh, I guess edit a layer. I'm going to include hazel renderer font.h. And then if we go down to like, well, just like on attach or whatever, or even the constructor, I can just do font font. Um, I guess we can just do like C Windows Arial or something, because that's going to be there. Um, and Where's that going to save it to output.png, right? So if we just like run this program and if it compiles and links and even generates that file, that would be nice. Okay, well, it didn't crash, which is somewhat surprising. Uh, and if we go to our working directory, which is hazelnut, then there is no file. Okay, wonderful. So maybe it didn't work. It didn't crash, but it didn't seem to work. Let's run that and we'll make sure that works. May not have been able to open the file or something. Maybe uh, maybe it's not called Arial. Let me just double check. Like maybe it's got a suffix or something. Yeah, it probably does. Ugh. Yeah, that did not open. Oh, it's so difficult seeing what the damn file names are. How do you just view like your fonts normally, man? This has always bugged me. Like, why does this have to be so... Oh, I know how to do it. I think if you copy it, if you copy it into a directory or something, you can see what the files are. No, so there is an Arial TTF. So why did that not work? That should have been fine. Okay, fine, new strategy. Um, let's put, oh, well actually we have an open sense font. We can probably try load that. Why don't we just do that? I was gonna paste an Arial here, but then I'm like, well, we have a font. Um, so let's do assets, fonts, uh, open sense and just do like uh, regular, I guess. So let's see if this works. Oh, did I forget the fonts directory? Lol, sorry, my bad. Okay, well that worked. Let's let the rest of that run. Uh, and now if we go to hazelnuts, we have an output.png, which 
That's just my photo view, I think, not working. <laughs> if we load it in Visual Studio, hey, we have the letter A, and it looks ridiculous because it's some kind of sign distance field. Um, cool. So, yeah. Pretty cool. And you can see it's obviously the letter A. Let's do the letter C because that's iconic. That's let us see if I've ever seen one. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. So there you go. So that part's working. It's all integrated. We have a little working example here as well. So I'm going to push this and we're going to call it a day because it's extremely hot here and I'm done. <laughs> okay, so we've added this stuff. We added a little example uh, and then editor layer also has an example. So I'm just going to add all of that basically. Uh, Arial can go away. Output can go away. Oh uh, yeah, this stuff needs to be done as well that stuff needs to be in and obviously this stuff but I think it's already here yeah it is um, okay okay cool that's a good start and then next time we'll basically draw the rest of the owl because we'll, we'll look probably end up looking at Big Hazel, I think. Um, and just carrying across, uh, you know, the actual kind of generating more than just one letter and packing it all into an atlas, because that's really all that's left. And then after that, we're going to have to look at, um, obviously, kind of generating each quad and drawing it in a batched kind of render away with the appropriate shader as well. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Game Engine series. Um... See you next time. Goodbye. Kind of ran out of things to say.